This is a download from Rutland Radio. Hello and thank you for downloading the Rutland Radio podcast from rutlandradio.co.uk. This is where you can hear the best bits from the last week. It's Rutland Radio at breakfast time. I'm Rob Pisani. If you were around Stanford's 1967-68, you must remember Cupid's inspiration. Ever since we started, people have talked about Cupid's inspiration. And 20 years on, uh, we get to talk to the man who actually sung those big hits. And he's back in Stanford on the 2nd of February as part of a 60s invasion. It's Terry Rice Milton. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's what, Rutland Radio at breakfast time. Legendary, um, if you were you know, around run it was Stanford, actually back 1967, yeah, Rob, 68, you, you must remember Cupid's uh, Well, we, we've yeah. been going we 20 years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's all. Oh, but, uh, yes, no, don't worry, I can on. do the maths. Um, on, we get to when, talk when to the man who actually sung those big hits. And he's back in Stanford on the 2nd of February as part of a 60s invasion. It's Terry Rice Milton. Thank you for joining us. What what a legendary, um, you know, run it was actually back then. Yeah, Rob, did you say 20 years on? Uh, well, we, we've been going 20 years. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's all. But uh, yes, no, don't worry. I can do the maths on, on when, when the 60s were. But well, it's just amazing, though. Yeah, it was. A you don't prepare you for it in any way. But do one of the things we did. No, I, I guess not. What about the local gigs that you remember uh, at the time? Because you know, people used to go uh, up to the RAF you know, to, to see to uh, stuff. There were obviously lots of venues in town as well. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, Wittering was one. Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, you never forget uh, times like that. Supported a few uh, big and the different uh, TV uh, shows. <laughs> The you don't prepare you for it in any way, do they? <laughs> no, I, I guess not. Record? What about the local gigs um, that you remember the uh, at the time? Because, you know, people used to go uh, up to the then, RAF uh, to see uh, stuff. There were obviously I lots of venues in town the, um, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wittering was one, yeah. <laughs> we play sometimes. Uh, uh, still sometimes. Supported. Well, uh, uh, we're not looking at things change, aren't they? Certainly do, yeah, absolutely. And I know the band actually continued um, for quite some years um, after after you left. But um, you're back together uh, with with Jim Lawton and, and the rest of the crew, really, on the 2nd of February. The others are all local lads, along with Jim. Time stands still sometimes for us, but of course, I'm not looking down in half, which seems to change, don't they? You know, it's not been certainly do yeah absolutely and I know the band actually continued um, for quite some years um, after after you left but um, you're back together uh, with with Jim Lawton and, and the rest of the crew really on the 2nd of February the others are all local lads and a lot closer to me it's great it's just you know I've been living down in to do this so at our age you know just over 50 I'm really keen and when you actually come back to Stanford because you know you've got that approach just off the A1 you see the George you see the churches uh, there's something really special about coming back to the town I would imagine oh, it, it is because it's such a beautiful place I mean everybody that I know is great it's just uh, they love you know, to stay. They love to, to be able walk. to do this. Um, and sort of thing, you know, so, you know at our age, you know, just over fifty. Um, yeah, isn't it? And, um, and, and when you actually you know, come back uh, to Stanford, because, you know, you've got that approach you just off the A1, that, you see the yeah, George, you see the churches, you uh, there's something really special about coming back to the town, I would imagine. Modern, oh, it, it, it is, it's such a beautiful the, place. I mean, shops, everybody that I know that comes up here, here and, uh, they love to stay, they love to do the walks. You never get tired of it. It's a fabulous town, isn't it? I always look forward to it. Never always get tired of it. I never get tired of it. To go through Stanford It's difficult when you walk along a uh, area. You it is see great, the honestly. low level. Uh, because what about um, the big singles? Um, the, how, how did they the come about, and, and what were you the listening to the, at the time? Because you know, you know the there was that real kind of, I, I suppose, the bin that sort of time, Motown explosion, yeah. and then you, no, you no, had that kind of soul element. Yeah, yeah. Go through drifters, coasters, you know, gay. Um, is great. All those, all those guys. Benny uh, King was. The, what about my um, the Sam big singles? Um, uh, how how did they, they come about, and what were you they, listening they, they were to at the time? Because you know there was that real kind of, I suppose, the bin that sort of Motown of explosion, way, yeah. and then you, I mean, you had that kind of soul uh, element to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. Until Drifters, coasters, like an angel. Gay. It was a real turn to listen to these guys and try and get in there with them. 
and it, it worked they just, because they were we did um, fantastic the whole month. They, they, they were real voices. Germany, you know, throwing a whole month where they were doing something like something out eight that, until that, three that in the morning, I mean, fifteen from, minutes off in each uh, hour, and they were pretty strict until I was out Germany. Then we did our forty-five minutes in every hour. It was a real turn and then going on these guys and down in the Star Club in getting there with them. And we actually worked because two days, forty-eight hours, a whole month in every four. Can you imagine Germany? Oh, when I came where back, we were doing early. something like um, eight until three, three in the morning. We could see the voice in each hour, and, and they're pretty strict. meeting people. And then Jay has the voice, and I'll be going on 45 minutes <laughs> every hour. And then a couple and, uh, of days later, so uh, is it getting there going on? And like, yeah, I think down in the Star Club in Cologne, we actually did for two days, 48 hours, one in every four. Can you imagine just so when I came back years, from Germany, um, <laughs> so you were basically almost Germany, doing what the, the Beatles the had done a few years gone, earlier then with those sort of runs. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, a good, it's a good crush. Um, <laughs> and then a couple well, of days later, so is it getting any better? No, basis, yeah, you know, I think a good, um, don't what's think the word so. when you when you go? I was really struggling for about two or three weeks. Um, when it came back, it came back I strong. I suppose just, uh, foundation, maybe, just, uh, or starting yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah sort of you were basically like almost doing what the to, Beatles to had done you a few in. years earlier then with those sort of and runs. It certainly did. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Really I, I mean, it's a good... And, it's a good um, to, I think the shine well, we've is more or less basis here. Basis, you know, but a good... Um, what's the word when you when you go to work for the first time? Because I'm singing and sitting behind the drums. I suppose foundation, maybe, or starting point. Yeah, Mike's yeah, it's sort of something like that. One of those big red to, to break you in. <laughs> And it certainly did that. Anyway, <laughs> did that. I mean, that's, that's me going <laughs> way, way back. I think the shyness mm. of more or less it was fun. It was, it was real fun behind drums in the early and, days. Uh, when we did and, Top of the Pop, well, you know, I'm, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> because um, I'm, I'm it singing. It must have been just amazing. Jump, and, uh, you know, back in those days, was it was it live? Was it recorded? I don't know what they do now, but it was the musician. That's me going way, way back. You um, could record the bass it was track. Fun. It was with the orchestra and, and the boys, you know. And, uh, but the vocals, well, even the backing really vocals, you could do okay, record well. during the day. It must have been just the, amazing. The and uh, you know, back in those days, uh, was it was it live? Was it recorded? Uh, uh, you know, well, live. It, it, mm. I don't know what uh, they do now. We, we went up to Manchester Union to do lift off. Everything the Manchester based. You could record the backing track with the orchestra and the boys, you know. Had but the vocal where. I Even back in vocal session of about three or four during gig. the day on a, re- in the a trot, the you know, when still doing a main hours, vocal had to be thing. done on the and day. I was croaking uh, on the Monday, you know, was up live in the morning. Mm. We were driving. Uh, I to remember we, we went up to Manchester. The, the agents to do lift off, speak to the musicians' the union, Manchester base, and they um, did. TV show. And when we got to Manchester, they said it was okay for me to mime. We had there's a lot of that going on. We'd had. A session of about three or four. Normally, gigs they, you had to on a, in a trot, you know, when still doing a few hours sort of thing. <laughs> and I was croaky on the Monday. We were up on a Monday morning. We were driving up to Manchester. We'd asked them out on album. If the agency could um, speak to the musicians' union, and they did. And, and you're still appearing on, on 60s okay compilations. I know even one that's out now. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> a lot of that yeah. going on. Um, the one with the racing car. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, there's, there's different versions, aren't there? Of yesterday has gone. You know, there's the slow. Lower and, and faster versions. I can't quite work out which is the definitive one. So it's <laughs> over to you. Uh, the, the definitive one on albums uh, is the one with a full orchestra, not the electronic yeah, line. Eh? Uh, and and you're still appearing on on 60s compilations. I know even one that's out now. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the one with the racing car in front. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, there's there's different versions, aren't there? Of yesterday has gone. You know, there's the slower and, and faster versions. I can't quite work out which is the definitive one. So it's over to you. Definitive one as well. Uh, is the a full orchestra, not the electronic yes. sound. So we, uh, we could see a great orchestra. But then somebody there asked me if I would go in a long way to um, uh, another version of Yes, I've um, gone. I'd, I'd done more or less the same record, tempo and charity record. Yeah. But it was an electronic sort of background. I was asked if I'd. Oh, uh, one you know, thing, I did the not West quite Ham and I'm a Spurs fan. The West Ham single as well. But that's another three piece orchestra. Yes. Oh, so we, we did know the that alone, scene, but that somebody there, there asked me if I would go along and do as we don't uh, another version of Yesterday's Gone. Uh, more or less the same a tempo. So, um, 
getting back to uh, gigging in, in Stanford at the time, do you think you actually uh, performed at the old Corn Exchange back back in the 60s? Uh, we did, actually. In, in actual fact, we... I, I tell you what, was, you know, because that on the day that Bobby Kennedy we can't do was shot dead, we were actually rehearsing in the court to be about that. Uh, that would be some, something like... So, um, getting back to uh, gigging in, in Stanford at the yeah, time, do you think you actually uh, performed at the old Corn Exchange back back in the 60s? Uh, we did actually. In actual fact, we... I, I tell you what was significant. Around the day the, that Bobby Kennedy was six um, and shot June, dead, was, uh, we were actually we heard in Corn Exchange yeah, about that. I think right about that time. That it was been some Bobby something Kennedy like. Shot. It was a significant <laughs> time. <laughs> June. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I think it what about um, yeah. for you hearing Obviously, yeah. the song the back, you know, going, I mean, there wasn't so much radio uh, back then, but um, hearing it the, on the radio the, as frequently the, as, the, as, as you did, that must have been just I mean, incredible I, for you to just, you know, go into a shop or hear it from a car and just yeah. stop and listen. Well, we, it was a we driving time. I can remember coming back from uh, no. London before I moved down this oh. way. Um, what about we um, the for you hearing the song on. back, you, you know, going, I mean, there wasn't the so much radio back then, but um, yeah, hearing it on the no radio what, as frequently you know, as, as you did, that must have been just incredible mm. for you to just, you know, go into a shop or hear it from a car and just yeah, stop right. and listen. We're driving along, I can remember coming back from London before I moved Absolutely. Well, at any age, I don't see why not. Yes, I still have You sort of look into the car to the side of you guys. So, 2nd of February, um, no who's with you? Because it is such a celebration of the 60s that night. Yeah, well, mm. It's Marmalade um, and, of course, the, uh, the foundation in our early 20s. Sorry, sorry, no, let me get it right. It's Marmalade and the Tornado. We have done... Uh, Absolutely. Well, at any age, I don't see why not. Yes, I still act. Not, not with Marmalade. Good. Sorry, get done with Marmalade, but we've, we've done with the foundation. So, 2nd of February, um, who's with you? Because it is such a celebration of the 60s that night. Yeah, well, it's marmalade and um, so you, you get and the foundation. Acts. Sorry, yeah, sorry, no, let me get it right. It's marmalade and the tornado. We have done gig, uh, um, gigs with the uh, marmalade. Asian. Uh, not, not with marmalade. We, sorry, we haven't done it Excellent. with marmalade. But we, we look forward to seeing you back in town. Thank you very much no, for joining us on Rutland Radio uh, today. Really of appreciate it. Oh, lovely for taking the time to speak. I hope that you haven't been too much about me. Um, well, it's just interesting to hear how it all uh, came about. You're talking about um, being a, a choir boy. Was that in Stanford? Were you at school here? At St Michael's Church. It became a, a car spare shop. Uh, um, Excellent. We look forward to seeing you back in town. Thank you very much for joining us on Rotten Radio today. I really appreciate it. Still there. I hope that you haven't been too much about me. Well, it's just interesting to hear how it all came about. You were talking about being a choir boy. Was that in Stanford? Were you at school here? So from once in Royal David City to where yesterday has gone in a few years. Yeah. <laughs> Museum, yeah. didn't it, or something? Well, yeah, thanks so much for now catching up with us here at Rotten Radio, uh, and uh, yeah. I'm sure you get a good crowd on the 2nd yeah. of February. Well, you well, know, when, when, when people well, hear 15, uh, those first um, few notes, there, that yeah. must be, you know, just send a shiver Christmas, up so many spines, around, you know, in the area of people shy. remembering those times. It's so from once in Royal David City to where yesterday has gone in a few years. You've got it, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for, for catching up with us here at Rotherham Radio, and um, I'm sure you get a good crowd on the 2nd of February. And, you know, when, when, when people hear uh, those first few notes, that must be just send you a might shiver. Well be. Yes, I understand why. Terry Rice Milton, thanks for joining us on Rotherham Radio. Oh, bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the time. They, they, they go on um, YouTube, and, and there's some fabulous remarks about it, you know, of what, what he did for people. And even youngsters today saying, you know, uh, uh, I wish I'd been around in the 60s. I love the 60s music, which is great. Best time ever, I think. But then I'm biased, aren't I? You might well be. Yes, I understand <laughs> why. Terry Rice Milton, thanks for joining us on Rutland Radio. Oh, bless you. Thank you very much for taking the time. All the best, Rob. Rutland Radio's best bids on the podcast. It's Rutland Radio Breakfast Time. I'm Rob Pisani. Uh, Veronica Burnett is with us from Cosmo Village Players, who, of course, these days are at Marcus Overton Village Hall. And very soon... Beauty and the Beast is coming to the stage. That sounds like a really ambitious one to do, actually, Veronica. It is very ambitious, yes. It's a musical with a panto influence, so it will attract, hopefully, the whole family to come and see it. 
And people think of Disney when they think of Beauty and the Beast. Is it similar to that? I don't suppose you have the licence quite to do what they do. No, we've had to interpret our own CVP interpretation on it. But there are a lot of similarities to the stage show and the Disney production, with a lot of the songs being used as well, which I think is fabulous. That really makes a difference, doesn't it? Because that's not always the case. You're not often able to do that, are you? No, no. I mean, I've had to use some of the music and sometimes rewrite some of the words which we've done. But I think the audience will be very pleased with with what we've been able to put together. Um, we're in our 39th year, so we're we're very proud to be able to put this, this one on. Um, and it's all come together, so really looking forward to it and I hope everybody will support us. So does it still have that kind of engagement that your traditional pantos have? Yes, very much so. Um, it, it's going to be, there's a lot of humour in it. Um, not a lot of snapstick, I must admit, because it's musical. But um, I think it will engage young people, old people, in every, every all the whole audience and will come together for the performance. Um, and we're using local talent. And I think today, with the situation in the schools where the government are reducing the drama aspect of the curriculum, I think this is fabulous opportunity for the youngsters to come together and take part um, and being able to to take those life skills with them <clears throat> into the future. And it's quite a <clears throat> wide kind of net that you cast geographically as well. You know, you've got people from right across the area who are part of it. We have, yes. People from Grantham this year as well, Stamford, Oakham, and of course Rutland and locally in the village as well in Market Overton. But yes, a completely across the spectrum we've got a cast of 25 ranging from four to 65 so it should be a fabulous show and how do you fit alan the dame in, into this is he right is, well is he daming or not no he's not dame in fact this year we've cast a female as a dame she's a burlesque dancer locally and she is very very good now alan's actually taken a, a sabbatical and he's helping front of house this year Excellent. I'm really pleased to, to know that, that some of those familiar faces are still part of it as well. They are very much so. Yes, young and old alike. So the easiest place is to call into the market store in Market Overton to get the tickets. Um, yes, you can do. Um, although we have a ticket hotline now, which I think um, is probably the best way of people getting the tickets. They can mm -hmm. pick them up from the market store, but we've got it all, or on the door at the on the night. But we have a number which people can ring, um, which okay. is which is there. So. OK, can you give yes, us I'll, that? Yes, I'll give you that. It's 07387 930 0737 And are you OK to just leave a message on that? It's yes, absolutely. Messages can be left. It's, it's, um, it, it's, 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 it's taken there. Um, people are answering it. Not quite 24 hours a day, but, um, but, but you will, we will get back to you. Yeah, yes. don't phone at three o'clock in the morning. No, please that, don't. You won't get leave, a nice response. Leave a message then. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, pleasure. Thank you very much for coming in and, uh, and, and have a great run. So it's the two weekends. And I know this weekend you've got the, the dress rehearsal as well, which you've got a small audience for. We have, yes. Yeah. So it's two weekends. The 1st of February is the first performance at 7.30 and then we're running the following Saturday, um, two performances on Saturday um, and the following Saturday and then two performances on Sunday the 3rd and Sunday the 10th of February at 2.30. Rutland Radio. It's Rutland Radio at breakfast time. I'm Rob Pisani as we welcome back Ali Turner. Uh, Ali, shall I call you Eleanor? I should call you Eleanor. No, really. no, no. We, we've known each other long enough. You can definitely call me Ali. Oh, I know. Thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Stanford's probably most well-known harpist of, of quite some years now, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I started playing the harp when I was five and, and that was uh, I was brought up in Stanford, so... I shan't say how old I am now. but it's no, no need to do that, <laughs> no. is there? Time has progressed, let's just yeah. say that. <laughs> and and you, you've performed around the world. Your, your harps have been around the world with you as well. Yeah, they have. Yeah, I mean, I te a lot of people worry about how I transport the big ones, but um, I don't tend to fly with the big ones. But I play um, small harps and um, with this band, Ranagri, I play the small electric harp and that's very portable. And uh, yeah, tell us about the band because you, you've fairly recently got together over the last couple of years yeah well actually the band's been going for seven years um and then i've joined about two years ago um because the former harpist jean kelly fantastic irish harpist who was one of the founding members of the band um she just had other projects taking over basically um so i was incredibly lucky because i first started doing the odd gig with the band kind of as a dep really about three years ago and just completely 
fell in love with playing with them and kind of thought in you know oh in a fantasy life I would love to be a part of this band but I never thought that that was on the cards and then it just um kind of came to be quite quite naturally mm. And is the the harp community one of those, you know, because it is still a fairly specialist instrument that that people of your level tend to know each other and, you know, it'll be, well, I did this, you know, Mm. I went here and did that. And, you know, do you know someone who could do this? And, you know, you're quite a close community. Yeah, really, really close. Yeah, we all support one another. Um, Yeah, actually, it's it's a lovely thing to be part of. I mean, everyone assumes that there can't be many harpists because you just don't see us around that much. But um, from my point of view... I. (laughs) I know thousands of harpists and yeah the network around the world is amazing there's always a harp if you need one um people like for example on Facebook and stuff groups people are so supportive to help you to get around and perform in all sorts of far-flung places really so um yeah it's an amazing community to be part of and you do still do local gigs as well as as part of uh, of your work and yep. from from Mama Lizzie's um, with partnerships that you've done there to yep. to Ranagri. It's going to be at um, Northwick Arms in Ketton on the first of February. Yeah, can't wait for that one. Um, yeah, so those concerts organised by Adam Cade and I've always been great friends with the Cades. Um, I was at school with Alice, uh, one of Adam's daughters, and. Um, so yeah, I've, and I've I've been to a lot of the gigs that they put on there, and the the atmosphere is amazing. So I was so chuffed when Adam asked me if Rana Gry would do one of them. And you've got an album um, out as well, haven't you? Which has just yeah. been, just been released. Yeah. So it's our fourth studio album, and it's called Playing for Luck, um, and it was out um, just earlier this month actually. And it's uh, we record with this label called Stockfish over in Germany. Um, and it's a beautiful recording studio. It's kind of like in a in a big cave um, underneath the record label owner's house. Um, and he makes his own microphones and everything. It's all state-of-the-art, amazing equipment. He even has his own um, Celtic harp himself for the studio, so I didn't need to take an acoustic harp. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a dream. That aspect of it as well has been a bit of a dream, yeah. And we'll hear a track uh, from that. And also, it's £10 to come and see you at the Northwick Arms Ketton on the 1st of Feb. Yeah, that's right. Um, doors open 7.30, although I think there's like a special dinner deal as well. So if you're tempted by that, having a dinner at the Northwick Arms first, there's a, I think there's a dinner and gig for £20 or something like that. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much for coming in and seeing us, Alan Turn. Lovely to see you again. And I know uh, your harp is, is with you, so it'd be a shame <laughs> to always. actually just... Well, I know, quite. <laughs> I, mean, I saw you in the supermarket the other day, but it wasn't. Oh, um, I know. But, <laughs> yeah. but there you go. Um, yeah, just wondered if you'd be able to play something for us and what you'd like to play as yeah. well. Yeah, OK, so I will give you a little snippet of um, a bit from one of the songs. So this is a, a little part of a song called The Medication Show. Um, and basically when we get together to write the songs, we, we sort of jam on different ideas, choose different keys, have a little bit of fun together for a few hours. And then usually me and the flautist Eliza go off on our own and we write the, um, the kind of instrumental parts together. Um, Donald does all the lyrics and all the guitars and everything and Joe, fantastic on his percussion, um, but me and Eliza do the little tunes. So I'm going to play you a little tune that comes in the middle of the song, so it's a bit without lyrics. <laughs> When I say, you know, I forget how how good you are. I don't mean that in in any kind of. Um, it, it blows me away every time I kind of see you on on that because Aww. it is it's so intricate, isn't it? And yeah. you're so you're so practiced on it and so yeah. creative with it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing a whole lot more at the Northwick Arms in Ketton and also listen out on our local music slot Saturday half past one and we'll play uh, one of Rana Grice's songs in full. Rutland Radio's best bids on the podcast. It's Rutland Radio breakfast time. I'm Rob Pisani. You might have heard about Peterborough Biscuit business event which uh, we've been mentioning here at Rutland Radio well Edward Smith is the lead event organizer it's on the 6th of February it's the East of England Arena and Events Centre uh, part of the showground complex there and 
Edward White Peterborough Biscuit. I mean, it is one of those names that gets people talking in the first place, isn't it? Uh, originally, yes, it was. Um, however, it's sort of our MD, who's rather a renegade, Steve Smith, he um, said to us one day that actually, to be honest, to make a biscuit is very easy. You need a few ingredients. And to make a business, you only need a few people or, or, or even yourself. Um, there are a few other variations that myself and my other colleague, Lorna, sort of like to bat around just to give it a bit more life. But primarily, it's because it's a catchy name and also from the uh, MD's description as well. And the amount of exhibitors you've got, I know it's, it's sort of a networking event and also for people to go along and find out more about businesses, but there's hundreds. Yes, there is. We're up to 313, actually, I think, if I just look at my spreadsheet now. So, yes, it's very, um, it's very large, one of the largest in uh, definitely the city, definitely in East Anglia, definitely in the surrounding areas, and we're second largest in uh, the country. The business show beats us just by about 10 stands. So, <laughs> yes. that's, that's incredible for something that's it, it, basically a regional event, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is a regional event, yes. It's, a one, it's the first Wednesday in February every year. Um, so, yeah, it's, we're trying to properly market as a, um, something in your business calendar, in the business diary. So everybody comes from all over the country to visit Peterborough and East Anglia so they get the best out of business for that day. And uh, obviously the, the storeholders uh, will, will have, or the exhibitors will have a, a chance to chat to each other, but you are looking for the public to really get involved with this, to come along and, and just, just find out what's out there. Of course. I mean, we can all sit there in our little silos and not talk to anybody, but that's not how business is done. We need to get out. We need to talk to people. Um, there's a whole piece on mental health as well that's fantastic about going and chatting to people but it's also for those not just people in business but your regular joes that are walking down the street if they fancy to pop in the car come down the road um and you know come and experience a, a fantastic day there's games there's retail outlets there's cooking demonstrations there's singers there's dancers it's a full day it's not just about business people it's also about business community and having fun while doing business as well and how much is it to come along it's absolutely free to come along as a visitor um, so, again, you can spend a full day, um, all, all of the excitement, uh, get every sensory hit you could and uh, come back with some maybe some new business, maybe some new retail project, uh, products. It is only a week before Valentine's Day, so you could possibly get your Valentine's Day gift there. Um, but, yes, it's uh, completely free. And the, the spread of businesses as well. I mean, I'm just looking down the list and I see names like uh, Discover Rutland, C.S. Ellis for, from, from our county, uh, but also um, hotels um, mm -hmm. all sorts of different, you know, businesses yeah. that are going to be there. Yeah, that's true. We have we don't have any lockouts, so anybody can come along, anybody can can exhibit, anybody can visit. Um, we don't sort of bar you by sector. You're just it's a free for all really. So any type of business can come along as long as you are in business, of course. Well, we look forward to to seeing you there and and being yeah. part of it. And thanks very much for for chatting to us today, Edward. It's been, I, I suppose, the the only way really we we can talk about it for an hour. But the only way to experience it is actually go there <laughs> on the sixth of February. So, what time do doors open? The so doors open at nine a.m. and doors close at four p.m. So it's a good seven hour event. You might be very tired after it. I know I was last year. And make sure you wear some good, sensible shoes as well. I never do, but there we are. <laughs> um, I look forward to seeing so, uh, <laughs> Yes. Thank you so much for that. It's really nice to chat to you. Rutland Radio. Yeah, I'm uh, Nadia Archer. I'm the Volunteer Development Officer for the RSPB in the Midlands. And Big Garden Bird Watch this weekend celebrating its 40th anniversary. We, we know uh, that Rutland's um, biggest sighting last year was the house sparrow, but is, uh, actually the sightings of, of different birds changed over the years. They have, um, and that's precisely why we do this survey, because we can, can track those changes. Um, there are things like uh, the goldfinch, which is um, didn't used to be common at all and, and we've seen that kind of go up the ranks over the years and I think that's as people have been really interested in feeding them um, you know when, when, it look, when we're looking at downturns song thrush is one of the birds that's really missed out um, and their numbers you know they used to be in the top 10 all the time but they, they're now not appearing in the top 10 um, and they've dropped you know their numbers have halved so it does show us some, some worrying and some promising trends as birds go up and down so literally, it's 
this weekend, just spend an hour and say what you see or, or tell the RSPB what you see. That's exactly it. So you've got to do one hour, nice and simple, of looking at the birds in your garden and recording down what you see. So what we need people to do is to to record the maximum numbers of birds that they see at any one time. And that's from the 26th to the 28th of January. Um, and you can go onto our website which you, to register, which is rspb.org.uk. Um, and you can, there'll be, a, you know, a big sign on there for the Big Garden Bird Watch where you can register to input your sightings. And House Sparrow, um, right at the top of, of Rutland, uh, is that, was that the same the year before as well? Uh, so House Sparrow, yeah, so the last two years, 2017 and 2018, was ranked number one. So popular one. So uh, Rutland listeners might hopefully recognise the sound of House Sparrows because they seem like a popular bird there. 79, so 76% of gardens said they had house sparrow in Rutland. Um, for me, actually, looking at over my garden in Rutland, uh, we see a lot of um, great tits, blue tits, that kind of thing. Yeah, they're, they're high scorers as well. Um, so blue tits coming in second for Rutland last year um, with 80% actually of gardens with, with blue tits. Um, so, yeah, that sounds about right. And then we've got blackbird and starling and wood pigeon um, under that one um, yeah so some of our you know wonderful um, common garden birds there and what can we do to encourage birds generally into our garden you mentioned about um, bird feeders and, and people sometimes think of it you know when it's snowed over it's iced over like we've had really wintry weather this week but is it useful actually to, to feed the birds the whole time yeah absolutely um, you know our garden's are havens for wildlife they're these special green spaces um because there are so many areas you know usually around um areas with houses where there isn't access to food so when we put out food for birds that's really a lifeline for them um where natural foraging might not be available so bird feeders absolutely will attract birds to your garden it's one of the reasons why we do the survey in january time because birds are more reliant on feeders so actually we're more likely to see them as well without having leaves on the trees they're easier to spot which is great um but, but as well as feeders providing cover for them so if you have got a garden without any bushes or shrubs um, that can be a bit tricky sometimes so feeders and some nice cover and does a, a bird bath you know a lot of people used to have bird baths do, do people still have them and they still actually you know useful for the birds Yes, really, really useful for, for having a bath in. Um, you do see blackbirds and robins really making a mess and splashing around. We've got two bird baths and they're used every single day. So I really recommend that. And it can be something really simple to do. Um, it doesn't have to be in really expensive bird baths, just something that you can put water in and maybe some stones and then they can get in there and have a splash about. Of course, even better than that, if you could put a pond in and other well, access to water is important. I think people forget uh, that they put loads of food out but then there's no water and birds do need to drink excellent nadia thanks very much for joining us and uh, it's literally from saturday through to monday spend an hour uh, telling the rspb what you see in your garden so you can note it down do it with the children or whatever um, and i know on the, your website there's loads of um, information and photos uh, just in case you're not quite sure of what you're seeing yeah, absolutely. There's loads of guidance on there so that, you know, so you can get some ID on, on what you're seeing, but also other loads of resources so families can then figure out what else you can do to help wildlife. Because this is one thing that you can do, but there's other ways that you can encourage wildlife into your garden. You can do it with your friends or your family. Um, really nice, simple tips just to get you kind of stuck in and involved with a bit of conservation work. And I know nest boxes as well, whilst we're talking about other things you can do. Uh, there's, there's quite a drive, isn't there, coming up actually at this, this sort of time of year is a good time to, to think about putting a nest box up in the right place with the right hole and the right size and all that. Yeah, no, that's it. So we provide food in our gardens and actually providing somewhere to nest is another one of those key things that wildlife needs. And if they're up at this time of year, um, birds like blue tits will start popping in and investigating thinking oh yeah i might i might i might take up that bit of um property you know later on when it comes to breeding season so now's a good time to put them up before birds are kind of 
prospecting and looking for somewhere to to nest and that can be you know really lovely story to watch unfold as the season goes on with the kids the weekly rutland radio podcast i'm david graham director of dg music and pure artists and pure artists is your your brand new uh, would you say offshoot really of, of dg music exactly that it's a it's a new arm if you like of dg music and um, we've been going uh 15 years this year and in conjunction with that and some other things I wanted to do, decided to make a new brand called Pure Artist, which is really to celebrate and promote the exclusive acts that we look after. So these are bands that we manage and look after their bookings exclusively, and we have done for a number of years, over 10 years now. And we have about 500 acts at DG Music, and I felt that we just needed to make a special representation of those people. They were getting a bit lost amongst the crowd, really. So I thought, well, why not set, why not set them apart, make a new website and a new sort of umbrella and um, place for those to belong. So that's when Vents of Pure Artist was born. And uh, we made a new website for that um, at pureartist.co.uk. And I made, we, we launched that last year, but um, I always planned to put, a, put an event together to kind of really galvanise all of that and show everyone what we're doing. And the event itself, um, Friday the 8th of February at Barnsdale Lodge, that, that looks like it's going to be up to maximum attendance already. Oh yeah, I think we've already got a waiting list for tickets for that and it's going to be brilliant. It's, it's a real mix of um, people going to that. So we've invited a lot of industry people, uh, venues, wedding venues, uh, event suppliers, because obviously we're trying to promote that and um, network and make sure everyone's aware of it so that we can secure the artist lots of work. That's our, that's our job after all. Um, but equally, we've been putting some tickets on sale to the public because we want all their fans to be able to come and watch the artists that are playing, with which we have six different artists playing at the event. And tell us who they are. Okay, so we've got uh, my band, Funk Soul Brother, um, the Atlantics, a four-piece rock band. They've got the, the Hound Dogs that everyone know, knows and loves. And then we've got, uh, they're all appearing on a main stage. And then we have a second stage, an acoustic stage, where we have um, an, uh, an acoustic duo called Monroe um, and harpist Eleanor Turner um, and a solo uh, male singer and an acoustic guitarist called Calder McLaughlin. So these are all people from this this broad area as well who've who've grown up here and they're bands and acts that have grown here as well. They are. So it is kind of organic. It's all come out of Rutland and the local area in Leicestershire, um, which is kind of how the whole um, DG Music company has developed out really from that central point. So yeah, it does still represent that. And, um, and we're proud to do that, you know, work um, locally, promote local artists and get them work in the area and beyond, you know. And, and actually, talking of beyond, you must have actually been involved in some amazing um, nights where you've literally o- opened your eyes and looked out and thought, this is something that I've helped to create that's here. Um, and, and actually, you know, without, without breaching a- any client confidentiality, <laughs> you know, you must have done some amazing gigs through this over the years. Oh, goodness me, yeah. I mean, there are the, the, that's one of the fun parts of being involved in music is you get to perform in all sorts of wonderful places, whether that's a private house that you didn't know existed behind some trees somewhere and you suddenly realise it's this vast kind of <laughs> uh, residence with um, goodness knows what grounds and it's, it's a real eye-opener in that sense. But then also big venues, whether it's you know um, well-known venues in London or around the country or even abroad, you know, you just sometimes look out and think, wow, yeah, here we are. Um, but that's, that's the variety of the spice of life. And that's kind of all these acts are used to doing everything, whether it's uh, is playing on a big stage somewhere um, to a, a ticket buying audience or whether it's um, to for a birthday party for 20 people at their home. You know, it's all it's all there and musicians are happy to do all of it. We need to, you know, we have to be flexible in order to to keep working. You know, that's that's the nature of the job. So where, where do you see this heading then, Pure Artists? Is it running alongside what you currently do? <clears throat> Absolutely. It's just it meant to be an extension of what we do. It's kind of just trying to focus on those acts and make sure that people are really aware that those that we're setting those to one side. I suppose it's like our, I don't know, like our Tesco's finest, I suppose, if one way of looking at it. Um, it's just setting those things apart and saying this is something that we have. We have close relationships with those bands, with those artists, and that matters a lot. In the 500 that we have on DG Music, obviously we can't have close, as close working ties with those as we do with people that we know live locally and 
um, and know them much more personally as, as we have uh, as we've grown to over the you know 10 years that we've worked with them so and that's important because when we're dealing with those for clients and booking them we know all about them what they um, like to do and what they can do for them and it, it's just it just works better rather than talking to somebody who doesn't know anything about an act you know I mean it's that's not what you want and I, I suppose actually over over the 15 years people have become more specific maybe about what they want and and what is out there because you've been able to kind of pull it all together yes i think people do know what they want and that's more and more these days i think and that's another part of it with pure artists we're able to work with those acts and be more flexible in terms of what people's requirements are and because often you know from where we're sat a band or an artist might come in and say well we do this and this and that's it um and that might not always work for a client whereas with pure we're able to say well no that's fine we can look at ways to work around you and make it be, work you know in a bespoke way for you that's what it's all about and I need to say as well I think the other part of Pure Artists is not just to focus on the bands I mean it's the, the obviously the artists are the main part of it but then equally another main part of it is the production we have a great team um, that do all our PA lighting DJ work everything else that we need and we can we have such a um, a vast array of equipment at our disposal now for that staging and lighting and things and we do that regularly for big events like at Oakham School where we do the ball and the um, and the big band concert and things like that um, and festivals um, that's all available that's what that's the other part of what we do and it's a, it's a very important part because the bands can be it doesn't matter how good the band is if they, they you know they're only as good as they look and sound you know and um, we really um, value the work that the production team do for us and i guess a lot of the time people might go to functions whether they're private or public and, and see an act and might not realize that actually um it all kind of comes back to this office uh, yeah i think that happens a lot yeah and uh, it, it's, it's almost slightly difficult when i'm out i mean i do know a lot of people in oakham and rutlands and people say oh you played at my party and i'm thinking uh yeah <laughs> because it does happen a lot you know so we, we, we are around a lot but that's great you know it's people you know, I think it's great that people buy local. We're all we're all about that, and we try to use do that when what we're doing. And in fact, with this event itself, we are using local suppliers to help us put that together. We can't do it all ourselves. We have to have furniture because we're, we're transforming the room at Barnsdale. We're relighting it. We're putting other furniture in, staging, and and so on. And we're using other local suppliers and businesses to help us with that as well. And that's what the event is about. It's about showing people what we can offer and then working with other businesses and people locally so that we can all um, work together have a good time and keep the wheel spinning you know um, there needs to be more of that going on generally I think I don't know if there's anything else to add unless you can think of anything that we haven't covered no not at all so but just to recap the events on um, Friday uh, the 8th of February starting at seven o'clock at Barnsdale Lodge tickets for the public will go on sale um on at 10 a.m on friday the 25th of january and it will be a rush for tickets so people need to be ready at their keyboards i think to snap those up rutland radio so it's burn tonight tonight there's uh, celebrations right around the rutland radio area and uh, one of our leading historians locally caroline aston is here to give us just a little bit about the man who you say was uh, a bit of a magnet to the opposite sex Absolute catnip, he packed so much into the short 37 years of his life and became a byword not only for poetry, Rob, but also for passion. Why is it that actually people link him, Scotland, Haggis all together? Because he is, if you like, the bard of Scotland. And he writes in the Scottish dialect too, which of course means that sometimes it's very hard by today's standards, to understand what he's saying. You almost need a glossary to understand exactly the point he's making. But he's a great observer of human life. People that you know can be recognised in his poetry. And, of course, he can write to things as diverse as a haggis, a mouse, and, yes, a louse that he once saw crawling on someone's bonnet at the kirk. Louse. A louse. A One flea. of those wriggly, nasty creatures, he wrote a poem to a louse. But, you know, he started writing quite early. And one of the first songs he wrote, called Handsome Nell, was aimed at a rather luscious young creature called Nellie Kirkpatrick that his eye had lit on. And I'm afraid to say his eye lit on lots and lots of handsome ladies. 
So Burns Night wise, if we want to really get into it and whether we're going to an event or doing it at home, what should we be doing? We should perhaps be putting a little plaid up on the walls, a little arrangement of dried thistles, and certainly reading some of his better-known verse. And, of course, the haggis, that golden centrepiece of any good Burns Night supper, served up with neeps and tatties, well, it should always be addressed and stabbed at the beginning of the festivities, and Burns wrote an address to a haggis. Would you like a wee taste of the haggis? I'd like to actually reply in a Scottish accent, but mine isn't as good as yours, so please go ahead. Right. Fair fire your honest sonsy face, great chieftain of the pudding race. A boon lamar you take your place, pinch tripod term. Weel are you worthy of a grace as long as my arm. And the actual grace that follows is as long as your arm, Rob, so we'll leave it there. Caroline Aston, thank you very much for joining us as always. And, uh, and have a happy Burns Night yourself. Okay, the new. Rutland Radio's best bids on the podcast. I'm David Clark, um, chair of Rutland Food Bank. And we're here today as the Rutland Lions formally hand over £250, which they raised in the run-up to Christmas, uh, to help you. Where will that money go? Oh, that will go towards uh, Christmas hampers for our 2018 hamper appeal. Yeah, this year uh, we were able, on the back pretty much of the Rutland Lions donation, um, to increase the number of hampers that we were given to 230s, up from, I think it was 200 the year before. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's a real tremendous contribution um, to contribute the equivalent of 60 hampers to the overall appeal. And as we've spoken before, the food bank is just as needed uh, as ever, if not more so. Yeah, uh, and certainly, you know, in the run-up before Christmas, um, our phone was ringing regularly. Thankfully, with, with lots of people in the community, and if I could take the chance just to thank people, um, for the donations, you know, had a tremendous uh, donations from, from individuals uh, in the run-up to Christmas, uh, but also from people asking, how do I get a, a, a food bank voucher? You know, so this is obviously people who have never been to to a food bank before, otherwise they wouldn't need to ask the question. So, yeah, we're, we're very busy at the moment. Rutland Radio. OK, hi, I'm uh, Julie Rowland, and I'm the president of Rutland Lions... Uh, this year. Uh, £1,250 then raised to help the Rutland Food Bank. I mean, such a worthy cause and, and also such, such an appropriate thing for the Lions to do when you've done your own food parcels in the past. Yes, well, um, we decided uh, that uh, the time had come to change and I think, to be honest, our Christmas food parcels got uh, a bit stale. So we approached the Rutland Food Bank to see whether we could join forces. And um, the contribution of a club uh, comprised then was a dual thing. We um, collected uh, £388 from the Christmas float, um, the sleigh. Um, and the other part, £890, was from the Christmas concert in Uppingham School Chapel, where the Rutland Big Band concert played uh, Christmas carols, and it was lovely. I attended, and lots of other lions, and it was just really relaxed, and um, I think one member had... um, No, somebody else had knitted some Father Christmases, and they were there, and we had... Uh, coffee and tea and cake so that was a really lovely event so in all we raised uh, 1,278 for and we are donating that uh, to the Rutland Food Bank and for their Christmas parcels you basically um, enabled a quarter of the people that they helped more more or less actually with with food um, and luxury items for Christmas yes yes that's correct and um, we're really pleased and are Working together with the Rutland Food Bank is, is, a, is a great thing because two is, is stronger than one. So, um, And we're really hoping that it made a difference to the people of those needy in Rutland. Highlights from the past seven days, the Rutland Radio podcast. Graham Barkman representing Peterborough Liberal Jewish Community. And we're here in Stamford after the, the Holocaust Memorial Day commemoration service. Um, and all these years on, it's, it still is quite breathtaking to think of all those lives that were lost, millions of lives. It is. Um, it's, it's important to remember what happened, not so that we can dwell on the past, uh, but so that we can actually remember 
what has been done and the inhumanity that man can uh, can perpetrate on fellow man. And um, what we also do on this day is commemorate other genocides. Regrettably, we don't seem to be learning from history. And what we need to do and what's important to do is to keep commemorating events uh, so that with some hope people will learn eventually. And as you say you're representing the Peterborough Jewish community stretching out here to Stamford. Um, Peterborough is as multi-faith as you could possibly get on, on our, our doorstep. Um, how does the Jewish community reach out to Stamford? Is, is that actually you know, a, a community of its own? Uh, we, we reach out wherever we need it. Um, our membership, uh, and in fact those friends of our community, really stretch um, farther than Stamford. Um, we have uh, individuals from Oakham, from the Huntingdon area, and uh, we, we open our doors to anybody that wants to make contact with us uh, in, in the area. And um, we're, we're playing this on the Holocaust Memorial Day itself on Sunday. What, what, will, what will be your thoughts, and, and that's so much of, of your faith, if you can speak for a faith? I think my thoughts really are, um, why? Why do we have to commemorate? Well, why do we have to remember such horrific events why do they take place um, it's difficult to comprehend the evil that does take place uh, and continues to take place we have to keep putting the message across we have to hope that if one individual that's growing up can take heed and is willing to stand up and say something against evil when it starts showing its face, then it's been worthwhile. Well, that's it for this week's Rutland Radio podcast. If you have any comments, you can email us via the website rutlandradio.co.uk and we'll have a new version on our website from Monday. This is a download from Rutland Radio. For more information, go to rutlandradio.co.uk.